This episode of the Nerf Herder Council is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. Warning, the following podcast contains irreverent humor, exceptionally nerdy opinions, potential cursing, and plenty of love for the prequels. If any of the preceding offends you, please turn off this podcast immediately, and may the Force be with you. Why, you stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder! You can't use that word! Only we can use that word! I'm a driver, and I'm a flyer. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Mm. Well, what do you know? You're tuned in to the Nerf Herder Council, your source for Star Wars opinion, conversation, and debate. Featuring your hosts, JT. And you had show notes. <laughs> this is why we don't do show prep, man. <laughs> AJ. Chewy crack a window. The cold air keeps me away. <laughs> Steve. It's a sign of any good audio <laughs> podcast is visuals, right? <laughs> On this episode of the Nerf Herder Council, a bunch of obnoxious online a-holes are ruining the Star Wars social media experience for fans and creators alike. What is their problem? This is why we can't have nice things. This is... What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your host, JT. With me are AJ and Steve. And uh, things have gotten a little bit crazy in the Star Wars universe lately. So uh, we got a few- very radio voice. I know, job. wasn't it? <laughs> Speaking of radio voice, I, I stopped to get a five hour energy and an energy drink. Uh, as I usually do before the show, right before I left work. And there was just like, had to be a high school kid working. And I, I told him, I said, you need to be in radio. He's like, hi, do you have a courtesy card? <laughs> just like that. I mean, this is normal voice. It sounded like he was on the radio. You have yourself a wonderful day today. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the <laughs> hell? So anyways, uh, yeah, things have gotten a little bit crazy in the Star Wars universe lately. So um, rather than touching on Solo again, which uh, we are definitely going to do, uh, sometime soon. There's a few things that are topical right now that we thought we would talk about. Um, number one, the celebration tickets went on sale today. Hey, starting on a high note. Yeah, yeah there we go. I, I was note. hoping you were going with that one first. Yep. So we won't spend too much time on that, but uh, I got my uh, five day passes for my wife and I and uh, went to uh, get the hotel. That was my chair. Don't worry, Steve. I saw that look on your face. That was my chair. Um, <laughs> Don't you uh, let out a creeper? No. Nope. The microphone picked up. No, no, no. That was the chair. I really hope the noise filters don't catch that one. <laughs> that needs to stay. I know. Um, but yeah, so I got my five day passes and then I went to get uh, try and get Monday night on our hotel reservation because we already had our hotel, which turned out to be one of the smartest things I have ever done. So anybody who's listened to the show for a while knows that I'm incredibly anal about booking celebration. And it's a damn good thing I did that this time because AJ and I booked our hotel literally within an hour after the announcement of star Wars celebration, Chicago 2019 was made. And I got online right at two o'clock today. Cause the hotels went up at 1 PM central and uh, we're in the Eastern time zone. And I waited in a queue online for 40 minutes and everything was pretty much sold out. So I just took whatever I could get for Monday. So basically we're staying at the hotel that's attached to the convention center Tuesday night through Sunday night. And then we're going to go to the last day of the convention, make sure we pack up the car in the morning and then drive to another hotel and stay there. You pissed away 40 minutes in the middle of the work day for a backup hotel. I was working. (laughs) I was still working. I was just in a queue. I don't know. My text messages say otherwise. I don't think I you were getting working. much done. <laughs> well, man, I really hope nobody from work is listening to this. <laughs> I, I, 
<laughs> I might just have to start muting my notifications at work because that's why I was being su- such a jerk to you over text. I'm like, dude, my phone's going off like every 30 seconds and it's nothing important whatsoever. Of course it's important. It's about celebration. It's 11 months out. And we already had our hotel booked. There was well, a po- like I said, it's a good thing we did. You know how many people didn't get a hotel? There was a point in time today that I homelessness just plugged- is rampant in Chicago. You're right. <laughs> I just plugged my phone in and walked away and came back to like 19 text messages, and I was just like, "I'm not going to celebration. None of this concerns me." <laughs> okay, now, now wait a minute. No, no, no. You got 11 months to save up for this. Don't you dare go to Disney like a third time next year. Yeah. No, I'm going to Disney again this year and Universal next year. <laughs> You've already been. You got to go this, to celebration. This out of the mouth of the guy that questioned my commitment. Oh, that's true. You got <laughs> you just I own. ditched a universal vacation coming up in two months with my girlfriend because I had to save for celebration next year instead. That's my <laughs> level of commitment. Look, Look at Steve. Your level of commitment forgot the computer last time, too. And that's why our podcast sounded like crap. <laughs> Look, he's taking shots instead of owning up to it. That's how you know he's guilty. No, it's because I don't care. That's why. <laughs> no, it's because you're guilty. Damn it. Yeah, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to celebration, hang out with all the toxic people outside. Ah, right. No, celebration is not the toxic people. Those, those <laughs> you think. Oh, we've been there. They are not there. Believe me. Oh, I have a there's that. more than enough of them that are going to be there. How do you know guy who hasn't been there? You can't say that. Right? You haven't yes, been I there. Yes, I can, because well, it's common sense. That's why. <laughs> no. Well, well if they're there, they keep their damn mouths shut. I'll tell you that. Because they're <laughs> that are not behind keyboards. So you're leading into our, our other <laughs> Well, topic. it's because he goes online and sees what's going on, because the internet is the place where all the fandom happens, right? Well, that's true. It is for me. <laughs> so are we going to jump into that or... Well, unless you want to talk about that, that was you, my att- you, unless yeah. you want to talk about how you spent your work day <laughs> some more. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I attempt at a segue, but now well, it's a little bit blown. So no, that's <laughs> true. Just go for it. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's what we wanted to talk about. We usually get into the movies or our opinions on this, that, and the other, and we're actually going to be somewhat topical this time. We try and avoid current news and events and stuff when we can because there's a number of other podcasts that do that and they do it very, very well. So we try and stay off of their turf, but this kind of, you know, begs to be discussed on our show. Let me give you some, some topical cream. Um, it's because honestly, other than solo coming out, it's the biggest damn thing going on in star Wars right now. I, yeah. Sadly, I, I, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. It was like either two days ago or three days ago. I scrolled through our Twitter feed and man, it was like two out of every three tweets were just vitriol. And, and just hatred and anger and all these nasty. It's, oh, it was. I'm like, what is been, going on it's here? It's been pretty bad ever since episode seven came out. And it's just slowly gotten worse and worse and worse and worse the past couple of years. And it's it's really pathetic anymore, honestly. Yeah. I mean, so I wanted to, I wanted to talk about it on the show and I'm going to try to not like add myself to the pile of people that are, you know, part of the problem because I am pretty, I have very strong opinions about social media and people that just go in there to be assholes. And I mean, it's, it's really pretty disgusting. And I finally, I I would say that I, I, I finally nailed my feelings on it in a tweet on our page today when I said, you know, here it is. Here's my two cents. Uh, I think anybody should be able to say anything you want about anything, no matter what it is on social media, as long as you're, you would say it to that person's face. If that's, I mean, that solves the problem to me. Oh man. Can you imagine what society would be like if people behaved like they do on the internet? That's what I'm saying. I mean, dude, it's, I mean, it was like Kathleen Kennedy's birthday today, right? And so Star Wars tweets out, happy birthday, Kathleen Kennedy, da 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 da. And you got you got to see the comments underneath it. Oh, she's totally the new George. You know, you know what somebody tweeted out under that the other day? They said, if Hitler, Stalin, and Kathleen Kennedy were in a room and I had a gun with two bullets, I'd shoot Kathleen Kennedy twice. Oh God. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Wow. And I thought it was bad when today. I, after the, the news about Kate Spade broke, I saw a mention that said, why couldn't it be KK instead? Yeah. I mean, the stuff that these people talk about is just. 
why would you say something like that? Like, if you don't like the movie, okay, fine. Right. But the stuff that they're coming out with is just asinine. I mean, the personal attacks. I mean, I'm, let, me, let me pull up the Star Wars page here and, you know, because, I mean, it, it's just. And it, it, the funny part, though, was all the people underneath it that that came out and said, oh, boy, here it comes. <laughs> like, Just ex- expecting like everybody to, you know, crucify poor Kathleen Kennedy. Let's see here. OK. For very, very first response. Star Wars said, happy birthday, Kathleen Kennedy. It's just a picture of her with Lucasfilm Limited logo, and it says, happy birthday. Very first, very first tweet. Boo, I wonder if she knows she's not popular. Oh, oh, and, and by the way, I did, I did blast somebody. I'm right at the top, so that's good. Um, yeah, it's so some guy, yeah. We're making a name for ourselves oh, somehow. I tell you, dude, because I, I, I can't handle that kind of stuff, and I knew I shouldn't have, but... So the response to that was thoughtful, mature comment for a boy, but you're not allowed to watch it without an adult. You have to be older. And somebody responded, learn English and a bit of cinema wouldn't do any wrong to you too. And I said, you can't tell someone to learn English if you're going to butcher the language in your response. Like, go ahead and be an asshole, dude. Yeah. And so, so the very next, the very next response, Hey, Kathleen, maybe it's time for early retirement. Move on to the next chapter of your life. That sort of thing. Yeah. And then someone says, a grown man crying about a children's movie franchise. What a big baby. And someone said, if you call these children's movies, then you clearly aren't a real Star Wars fan. Jeez. Really? Because George Lucas said he wrote them for kids. You, you know you know what this is? This is exactly what George Lucas was getting before he sold the franchise. Yeah. But the internet and social media hadn't matured to this point yet. Could you imagine? Oh, good oh. God. Like it's, he got out, he got out actually a little bit too late based on the vitriol he was facing. Can you I'm imagine you. how he'd be crucified now? It's it's amazing how George created the the three original movies and genuinely loved by everybody. Then he creates the prequels and everybody craps on him and oh you ruined my childhood and this, this, and this. So he says, screw it, takes his ball, goes home, hands it off to Kathleen Kennedy, and now everybody bitches about what she does and goes, well, this isn't what George would have won and George and George and George. And it's like, you guys realize you chased him away to hand this to somebody mm-hmm. else. And now you're sitting there telling this person you should do what George did when you kicked him out in the first friggin' place. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah. It, it, like I said, like I, short of saying that the star Wars fan base is just full of ass hats at this point. Like it just, it it really does seem that way anymore. And I get that it's a very vocal minority that's doing this. But when you just Google something about Star Wars now and and Variety and ABC and all these people cover it, they make it sound like it's the entire fan base that does this stuff. So it, a few jack offs are really ruining everything everything for everybody at this point and Mm -hmm. and and the thing is you're not changing anybody's mind disney's not going to sit there and go oh you know what like i'm tired of all this crap i'm just we're just not going to make these other 12 movies that we planned on actually that's that's what i'm kind of afraid of i mean and they they're in the green already so you know this boycott solo thing that they only made 83 million dollars opening weekend that's still $83 million in their pocket because they're in the green. But yeah. Disney doesn't care. But that <laughs> is that is in the flop range that would possibly scuttle a sequel. Or, you know, if it was any other movie besides the Star Wars franchise, they would probably go like, maybe let's not Prob- make another one. Probably. But being a Star Wars franchise, it's not going to affect anything about their decision making going forward. They're just going to go, OK, we're just going to keep yeah. shoveling well, see, these things out. It's like, whatever. I, it's like it's like I saw somebody on Star Wars Newsnet comment today that they said like, it would be a big it's a big difference between Solo and like Top Gun 2. You know, like, yeah, that would really be affected to the point of, yeah, we're not going to do another one. Star Wars is just like. Eh, flop let's just send out another one next year yeah it's it's I mean, and it, these fanboys think that they know what's going on like they think that because solo is not doing well that all of a sudden everything's going to change i actually commented back and forth with somebody today on star wars newsnet the guy said that oh well see now you know everybody not liking the last jedi like it's only going to be a few months before the ryan johnson trilogy is canceled and kathleen kennedy is going to be removed as head of uh head of lucasfilm i'm like dude because a bunch of loudmouth dicks on the internet scream about the last Jedi because they just wanted a rehash of everything they'd already seen. 
the movie makes one point three billion dollars. You think they're going to tell that guy don't make more movies? And Kathleen Kennedy, who's made them, I mean, basically you can just drive a Brinks truck full of money up, you know, Lucasfilm or Disney's driveway every time she puts her name on something. They're going to replace her. Are you right. high? Yeah, I mean, okay, so like, like this is the only studio in the history of forever that ever had one quote unquote by relative standards flop. Uh, does anybody remember a movie called um, A Wrinkle in Time? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I didn't see it. Does anybody remember uh, Waterworld? Waterworld? No, that's going too far back. I was trying. I this is a problem. That. I'm trying to list flops and I'm having a hard time remembering them. Uh, well, let's see. In more recent memory from Disney, Lone Ranger. What was that one? Tremendous flop. And then uh, was it John Carpenter? That's the one I was trying to think of, like the futuristic one. That it was called John Carpenter? Yeah, something okay, like that. Was that. One I was like, something ah. like that, yeah. But yeah, tremendous flop. And they were yeah. thinking new franchise out of that thing. Uh-huh. So Disney is not is not unfamiliar with, you know, laying the giant egg every once in a while. And to say that a movie has only barely cleared its budget with all the production woes this thing had, and only five months after the last one, it's it's not a problem. But Steve, to your point about like these people online thinking that they're going to like change the course of the franchise with their, with their, their tweets yeah, their, and their, their noble cause of changing the, the, the future of star Wars and stuff. Well, here's what I'm afraid Please. of. Like you, like you said, vocal minority, but they're the vocal minority. They're not the silent majority. So while you want to say like, Oh, they're just the minority. It doesn't matter. They're the only ones speaking. There aren't enough people. And this is where the few voices that we have and the few ears that we reach can help out with this. There's, there needs to be enough of a positive push online as well. So we don't just only take to Twitter and Facebook and, you know, Instagram and everything when, when we hate something, you know, I, I purposely have been using, you know, the occasional post to say how much I enjoyed solo. I listened yeah. back to our last episode and, you know, honestly, my interest in the movie has waned significantly. I'm going to go see it again because like it's star Wars. Of course I will. Yeah. But it's not like, Oh my God, I got to see it again. But you know what? I'm going to, because I want another box office receipt to tell them I like what they're doing. That's what I did. And, and I'm all, going to continue to do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't see the point. All the only thing that if anyone's going to have an impact from all this negative press and social media, all they're going to do is taint and, and ruin the possibilities for the franchise. They love so much. They're not going to change it for the better start. They're not going to wake up and go, well, let's start listening to the fans and totally change what we're doing. They're going to go like, no, apparently this isn't popular anymore. And let's not put as much into it. Yeah. The, the people doing this, thank thank God, you know, it's a billion dollar, multi, multi billion dollar company that we're talking about. So I think they kind of know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they know not to listen to the jackasses on the Internet because they know it's a loud, vocal minority. I mean, the, the celebration stuff today just proved it. Right. Tickets are flying for celebration. Hotels, you can't get a hotel room. I really don't think they're looking at the solo receipts and then going, gee, I don't think we're popular anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and these people don't realize that by doing these sorts of things, you end up killing what you love. You know, it's they like, almost did. Yeah. I mean, George Lucas didn't want to make any more Star Wars movies because people were such giant holes. So shut up. Like you claim to love Star Wars, but you're killing it. Seriously. And, and they just they just don't understand. And all this negativity is just so ridiculous. It's just I mean, like, what's what's the end game? Like, act like you're one of these vocal minority idiots out there. Like, what's your end game? Like, do you want Disney to sit there and say, screw it, we're not making movies anymore? Or do you want like and, and if that happens, what do you do at that point? Do you just you're like, OK, mission accomplished. Go on about your life. Like, or you're just going to sit there and bitch about the fact that Star Wars isn't getting made anymore. Yeah. It's like, there's no end game to this. So it's like, you're literally just doing it to be a piece of crap. I, I swear people don't remember what it was like in 2010 or actually 2012 to be more accurate, but no, anything from 2005 onward, pretty much like as soon as revenge of the Sith came out, mind blown, great conclusion to, to wrap up the original six films. And then do you remember that feeling? Of just like, well, now what? Yeah. And then it, it was three more years before we got any new Star Wars content with uh, the Clone Wars. And and that, even though we were getting TV shows, I still felt like this is like the the 
death rattle of Star Wars. Like, there's no movies on the horizon, and it's not going to continue in perpetuity as a TV franchise because mm-hmm. you're never going to get. They, you know, George wanted to do the live action series. He's like, he can't afford it, so yeah. we're not going to do that. So what? We're just going to like live on in cartoons and Family Guy and Robot Chicken series. Yeah, like the the franchise was dying, and and then he hands it off to people that say. We're not only going to bring it back to relevance, we're going to put it out at such a pace that you've never seen before and take it in so many more directions than it's ever been. Yeah. And now you're bitching about that? Mm-hmm. Like, this is everything you wanted. It, it's We covered it months ago when people completely complained, like, massively complained about episode seven and it being a rehash. Of, well, we need an original story, in it, and then you get an original story with The Last Jedi, and everybody acts like it's the worst movie in the history of cinema. Yeah. It's just like, what the hell do you want from these people? Yeah, it's just, we've talked about it before, how nobody, the majority or whatever, like, nobody's ever going to be happy. Because, like, you could grab some of these, like, social media warriors that sit behind their phone or their keyboard and do all this and go, fine, you write the next movie. But they'll write what the hell they want and 99% of the fan base is going to go, well, that's a piece of dog crap. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it's like, so like you're, you're never going to please every single person that is watching these movies. It's just, but it still doesn't excuse. It's like you said earlier, you can dislike the movies. Like it doesn't excuse the, the, the toxic crap online, the attacking of the people, you know, that are in these movies. Cause you know, you know, Kelly Marie Tran totally made her own character for the last Jedi. So you should completely crucify her online and everything Dude, like that. Cause all, yeah. all, all I know is we saw her on the celebration stage at, at the, the live stage, uh-huh. I should say at celebration. And she was in the panel and she was so energetic. I was there when she got up there. And she was just bubbly, and she was so pumped. Yeah, we to be a part of Star Wars. Especially like uh, everybody since Episode Seven came out is just like and just jumped on this train with us, and just love every bit of it. And I really hope that any any people involved in the Last Jedi production and the solo production that have not had a chance to experience Celebration firsthand yet, I I just I hope somehow this gets to their ears so they realize that. Just what they read online is not the representation of the fan base. Yeah. Celebration is a super true representation of the fan base because everybody gets along and everyone's just happy to have World of Star Wars. That, I mean, like you said, Kelly Marie Tran being on stage right there, that's the feeling. I hope she holds on to that because yeah. having her hiding from the fan base online now because of all the all the crap thrown her way. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. We should be embarrassed as a fan base yeah. to be doing that. I mean, I, I saw her on stage and, and my first thought is, man, I would hug her if I could. She, it, it was like the way she was acting was like the first time I saw Star Wars. She was that excited. She was just like thrilled for people to be cheering. And she was, she's like, I'm in Star Wars. Like it was so cool. Hey, even at the and premiere and this? all that, when she was like in tears on the red carpet because of how happy she was. Yeah. About everything. And now this, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, what, what the hell? And I, I and mean, this is what after a, what two years after Daisy Ridley did the same thing because she said it was just she's just like social media is not good for your mental health. It yeah, just and just wiped herself clean too. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's like Ryan real, Johnson got death threats. I mean, yeah, boy, he he blasted somebody today too. Yeah, I, I actually I actually commented on somebody's. He thing. might be my favorite Star Wars director now. Yeah, I can't behind I can't, George Lucas. I, I always yeah. got to give credit to well, the original, yeah. but. I mean, I can't I can't wait to see what he does with that trilogy. And I, I, I commented on somebody else's post. I think it might have been related to the Kelly, Kelly Marie Tran thing, because that's everywhere. But I said, you know what I really hope? I really hope that one of these celebrities finally comes out and just puts everybody on blast. Like, just come out and go, you know what? F- you. Like, just just completely rip them to shreds with one just enormous, like, thermal detonator, using Star Wars terms, thermal detonator of just you know, anger and just smack like, like smack back once mm-hmm. and then go away. Like these people need to be told. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to promote negativity. We want to promote it's, positivity, it's, but that needs Hamill. to be done. It's Hamill. He needs to be the one to go on social media and do it. Dude. <laughs> and how much you want to bet? He probably, and he would be that guy too, the way he rips to? apart politics and Trump oh. and all that stuff. You but know? do you notice he stays out of it? 
he, he does. He, he probably wants to do that, mm-hmm. but he knows that if he does that, then the a-holes are going to come yeah. after him and he don't want to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, it's just stupid. I mean, there's a reason why even his, what, his daughter came out not too long ago and said something about the fact that he doesn't even like talk to people in the airports anymore because yeah. he used to just like entertain everybody. And then he would find stuff that he knows he signed earlier that day on websites for sale, like later yeah. in the day. So he doesn't even do it for people anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, that's, it's just so said. I, I actually made a decision. Dude, like, I hate the fact that I hate the star wars fan base so much sometimes well you can't you know, say like, fan base you have to say know, online fan base. i know it's not we everybody have to but the stuff with mark hamill's not online though it's people doing it to his face and then going and well, selling the crap online that's, that's just being a cheap ass like that, the, that's I trying mean, to make a buck it's just more star wars idiots that's all yeah like i i hate the fact that like i wish i could sit there and say i know it's not the full fan base like i know it's not i know it's a very small minority but it's just I, well, I hate I hate some of the people we have to be associated with sometimes. Well, they're just they're just jerks. I mean, it's to the point where when celebration comes around next year, if Kelly Marie Tran shows up and if she goes into the autograph, if she's like one of the people you can get an autograph from, mm-hmm. I'm going to buy an autograph. Not because I want an autograph. I'm going to I'm going to pay for the 30 seconds to go talk to her, to, to just tell her, <laughs> be like, you know, I support you. Tons of people support. I know she'll hear it a bunch, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to tell her like those people are. God, I'm trying not to have so many edits, but those people are pieces of garbage. And I love what you did. I love your positivity. Please. You know, I know you're not online, but don't let it taint what the Star Wars fan community is. And, and mm-hmm. the fact that the majority of us really, you know, even if we don't like your character, some people don't. I have no problem with the Rose character. We still love you as an actress and as a person. And we thought you would think your your enthusiasm is is addicting. And, you know, well, I'm scrolling through Entertainment Weekly as we're talking about this. And there's two pictures of her up on their screen right now of her like on her knees breaking down on the red carpet of the premiere because there was a kid or somebody dressed up as Rose. And oh, that's she, so cool. So yeah. like, and she ran over and like was hugging this girl and taking pictures. It was like so moved by that. And it's just like and then our fan base chooses to tear this down and treat her like crap online because her character was stupid or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, did you, did you hear kind of what started it? It was on, on the Wikipedia page what somebody did. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a while ago. That was right when the movie came out. I kind of vaguely, it was, remember it was that. shortly after there were, there was something on Twitter. I saw where they linked an article that actually had a hyperlink to the, a, a picture of the old, post but somebody went on star wars wikipedia Mm -hmm. and changed the rose tico character name to chong chong wing tong or something like that and then went on this like expletive in the in the character description like this racist expletive filled tirade about like i mean it was and it was i mean it was so offensive it's just not even it's unbelievable it's that, unbelievable how offensive it is. That says so much more about the poster than the postie. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a hashtag going around now called uh, it's a uh, hashtag force out hate. And it's like people are trying to say, you know, enough. Good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's you know, the most ho- amazing hopefully, thing. Hopefully like this. I don't know if they have or not. So I might be talking out of my ass here, but hopefully the Star Wars like social media accounts jump on that and try to run with it a little bit because obviously they can't sit there and hide from this. They know what the hell's going on in the world of social media because of the the movies they put out. So it'd be nice if they kind of took a little bit of a stand and ran with that a little bit. I am interested to see what the official response is going to be through things like the Star Wars show on YouTube because it's we're kind of now in a slow news cycle. You know, we've got a year and a half before episode nine and celebration still 11 months out and Solo's not doing what they hoped at the box office. So they're, they're going to want to steer a little clear of that. Yeah. It's like I said, like sadly, this conversation is like the biggest news in star Wars right now. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Well, I mean, in, in positive news, my cousin bought his kids, the ultimate collector series, Lego millennium Falcon. So there you go. Uh, but anyway, I, I did. <laughs> that's I did a bummer. Phys- not, we don't have that. That's a bummer. I know. I was about to go on a tirade about that. I just realized <laughs> I did physically see a Black Series Vader helmet, you know, and yeah, other those random are finally good coming news. Out. Those are in stores. So. But yeah, no, I, I think, um, like you said, that I'm glad that there's a hashtag going on. And and I'm I'm thinking of people like like 
JT, you were just on less than 12 parsecs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And shout out Tim. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm going to shout him out again because you want to talk about one of the most upbeat, positive fans. Yes. Using his platform to bring people together. Yes. Like, I, I love that so much. Like he just had a Sunday confessions episode and he touched on this stuff briefly. And he basically just said, look, no matter what's going on, like we all love the same thing. We're all on the same side. So people that want to use this as a platform to, you know, like hack a Wikipedia page and spread racist crap and, you know, trash talk each other and, you know, get into the Twitter fights back and forth with the authors and whatnot. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is, this is our escape. This is what we do for fun. Why do you want to taint that with all this kind of garbage? Like, I, I think we need to make a, a concerted effort as the positive minority to, to be more vocal and, and let people know that it's okay to actually be friends with each other too. Yeah. I, it, it, it's like the guy from the nineties from the, the, the Terry funk thing when the, this is real to me, damn it guy that went all yeah, around. The yeah. internet. Like there's <laughs> right. too many people that are jumping on this and acting like star Wars is life for some reason. And can we just borrow like Unikitty from the Lego movie? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I actually got personally attacked about a month ago for saying that I watch Star Wars as an escape. I watch Star Wars solely for the entertainment value that because somebody said, you know, if you don't see the political and social undertones in Star Wars, you know, if you didn't see that as a kid, you obviously weren't paying attention and don't it was just like ripping on people that aren't getting into the so- social justice warrior portion of the, I'm like, I said, no, I tweeted back. I said, no, I just no, watched some Star of Wars us don't fun. look for the SJW crap. Like yeah, you do when literally, you watch Star Wars. All I said was, I no, not necessarily. Some of us just watch it because it's fun. I like the force. I like lightsabers. I like the millennium Falcon. So I watch Star Wars. It's escapism for me. I don't, you know, I, I, keep politics and stuff in the real world. And I got hammered for it. And I was like, what the hell? I, I, cu- I couldn't believe it. I'm like, so I tell you that I just watch a movie because it's fun and you're on me. What is that? I, I mean, I was in shock and I, and I, I was tweeting back and forth with some people and people were calling me willfully ignorant. And of course, using all these like hipster bull terms. And I'm just like, shut up. And I don't, I can't tell you the number of tweets that I've typed and deleted because I don't want to have that tweet out there that, you know, of me adding again, like I said earlier in the show, adding to the pile. <laughs> like, but I, I had this author and I'm trying to remember her name cause I don't mind putting her on blast, but it was this author from like California that totally came at me and Frank. No, okay. no, no, it was, some it was some if she's Italian. tweeting we got another problem yeah i know it was like some <laughs> italian name or something and she just attacked the hell out of me i mean she basically was like she called me a nazi i'm sorry she called me a f-ing nazi and just tearing me apart and she said basically saying stuff like well this is you know she oh this yeah this is what she said she said i was a fan of this of this saga before you were even a gleam in your daddy's eye and I went, um, I saw episodes four and five when I was four years old in the theater in 1980. And I've seen every single film in the theaters. And she typed back. Sorry for getting for the edit. She goes, oh, no, you don't. This is my f- fandom. Take your Nazi bullcrap elsewhere. Hashtag muted. And I'm like, so basically you want to rip me. And then you're going to mute me because because you don't want to hear my response. So when I looked her up to find out who she was. Do you know she was younger than me? And that's when I got pissed and I didn't say anything, but I would love to give her name out because I want to be like, you know what? You want to come at me? You want to say that it's your fandom? First of all, it's nobody's fandom. As yeah. soon as you start quantifying levels of how big of a fan you are, you're an asshole and you are not as big of a fan. Because if you are a Star Wars fan, you know that we all love this together. And if you start trying to go out fan me, you're wrong. And here's another thing. You want to out fan me? You want to talk about it's your fandom? Guess what? Mother. I'm a four time Star Wars trivia champion. You want to see who's a bigger fan? Why don't you come at me? and We'll do a little trivial pursuit. 
Then we'll see if it's if, if, if you're such a big fan, you want to come at me. Oh, but I can't say that because I'm muted. <laughs> and you also so, can't yeah. say it because you'd be attacking a female on social oh, media. Yeah, well, and, you know, you'd that, be, dude. And that happened the other day, too. I I saw it. So, all right. All right. All right. Look. I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to Hashtag put it, 2018 I'm putting the I'm pumping the brakes on this whole conversation why well, I'm we calm said now. I just, yes we said this show was not going to become a bitch fest well well no we okay. said we weren't going to rip people we didn't say it wasn't going to become a bitch fest no we We're said supposed we, to, no, we said we didn't want it to we didn't say we didn't think it was going yeah. to. I just when you attack somebody's fandom it's like she doesn't even know me and 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 that's just such well, personally, it, I, I've felt like that for a long time. Ever since episode seven came out, people started going using the well, if you like this or you like this character, you're not a true fan thing. It's just there's just been this divide ever since Disney took this thing over yeah. that people are. It's just it's nonsensical to this start is, trying to put this divide between the fans for no reason. But this it's, is it's not even, exclusive to Star Wars, though. Not by any means. No, not anytime at all. you've got a long running franchise or a long running anything for that matter. Anything, you're, going yeah, to, you're, you're going to get different segmented groups, especially as things branch out and have different facets to them. Like like JT, you love your Van Halen. You love your Van Hagar equally. Right. How many people say you're a fool or any other expletive you want to think of because David Lee Roth is is a real Van Halen. You're not a true fan if you like that Hagar crap. And, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, legions of Kiss fans that say, you know, it's only Peter Chris and that's it. And Tommy Thayer can go to hell because he's not Ace Freely. And Freely. Sorry. <laughs> really? Anyway, really? Hey, give that, him, that's the issue right now. Give that, him credit. That he always made annoys sure. people called Ace Freely. Sorry. Give, like, give him credit. Pet he pet made pet sure he, he made sure I didn't have any edits to do while he was saying that. So he gets a pass. <laughs> I right. was quoting somebody else technically. So, but yeah, when something, no, you dropped an MF or that was not quoting. <laughs> that's true. I do apologize for that one, but that's, that's the way it goes though. People are like, it's this true. happens it's all true. over the place. Like even, even with like work related stuff for me, I build websites for a living. So there's a website that people all go to and any, any, other programmers listening will know stackoverflow.com and all that is is shark infested waters it's supposed to be where you can go and ask questions and the community will help you out but what it turns into is a pissing contest to see who can shut down the other answer first and tell the original poster that he's stupid for not knowing it already and that's just kind of the way it goes. And and every fandom seems to do the same exact thing. Like So when you go to that website, it just links you to Twitter then. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Like and, and that's the thing, is like I I should be answering questions and I should be asking questions because the whole thing thrives on interaction. I don't post anything. I am a ghost because I am petrified of of putting myself out there and ha- getting slammed for what I say. Because God forbid I'm wrong or don't know something like somebody else. And yeah. It's like, what are you doing on here, stupid? Yeah. yeah, it's it's like right before we started recording when you guys came over and I was and JT was like, if you looked at our Twitter feed lately and I'm like, yeah, I just randomly scrolled through it the other night and I was on it for about two minutes looking through our mentions and our, our notifications and I just went right back to my personal page. I'm just like, dude, I, I don't want nothing to do with this stupid thing right now. Like our you, like I. If anything, I felt more like I wanted to delete the Twitter account than anything. I'm like, this is the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life. And I don't want to be any part of it right now. (laughs) You know what's awesome about our Twitter feed, though? Because I'm trying to be really active. And by the way, yeah, which is fine. Like going off of what I just said, you can have that thing. I don't (laughs) care anymore. It's really weird because I always say I because it seems to be it's it sounds really weird to say our. Yeah. And I also don't want to put it out there in case when he was like, oh, I don't I don't think that. So I just put Hashtag it out there. Not my account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's okay to be negative. But um, the thing that I actually am kind of proud of with ours is, is it when we look at our mentions and stuff like that, like, like I said a minute ago, like I've, I've typed out so many tweets that I've deleted because I don't want to add to the pile of all that kind of stuff. So I try and if, if I'm getting into some, like you phrased it, AJ shark infested waters, I just phrase it as a question and I'm polite. And, you know, I misread a tweet from somebody the other day and we were going back and forth and it looked like this person was attacking me, but they weren't. It's just the way they were phrasing it looked that way. And when they clarified it, I went, oh, never mind. Then I'm wrong. And I'm sorry. Sorry. And she's like, okay, that's fine. So all of our mentions and retweets and stuff, it's all like positive stuff. Like so-and-so liked your tweet or so-and-so responded. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's just conversation. It's nice. So I feel like I'm doing it right because I'm there's, there's nothing in there of, us just getting hammered or us throwing our weight around 
or excuse me, throwing wait, like we have any of that right. <laughs> um, except for me in my midsection. Um, hashtag down 17 pounds. Um, that'll never trend. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it just, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not us throwing our two cents worth in and getting in fights and all this stuff. It's just, you know, we keep it light. You know, we, I, I, I tweet remarks to things and I'm positive and, you know, I, and I, I feel like that's proof that we're not getting dragged down by it. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean it, the crazy thing is, I mean, it's even, it's now getting into like the highest levels of, you know, like the, the online community and, and even people that are really well known. I mean, like rebel force radio was going at Chuck Wendig and all of a sudden, I mean, I, we follow rebel force. And I hadn't seen a ton of tweeting by them. All of a sudden, Jimmy Mack is just all over Twitter, just going off. I'm like, what the heck? And then finally, Jason Ward from making Star Wars just a few minutes before we started recording. He just laid out like six or seven tweets, just crushing Rebel Force Radio. And I mean, it's just saying that they're fake and just putting them on blast. And it's like, and, you know, Chuck, Chuck Wendig got called like, you know, he, he posted something about Star Wars fans. And Rebel Force, Jimmy Mack called him out, called him on the carpet. But every time he tweeted about it, he had to at Chuck Wendig. Like, he's taking digs. I'm like, man, these guys are getting into it. Well, and then and then Jimmy Mack says, well, I emailed Lucasfilm asking them why their employees are doing this, that, and the other. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Well, I got to <laughs> give him credit because I, you know, we talked about that show before. And, you know, I, I can confess this now because we're on their side. <laughs> but... You know, we, we had, we've taken issue with them in the past for being a little too apologetic and, you know, just not, not necessarily shilling for the company, but I mean, they never had a bad thing to say, even though sometimes, you know, there are missteps. So for him to go out there and actually, you know, speak his mind like that, I mean, he's proven his bona fides. He's a true fan. Yeah. But so if he's going to, if he's going to go out there and express his opinion like that, I think he's justified in doing so. He is, he has paid his dues for supporting the franchise. Yeah. But, but. If you re- if you read the tweets, they're kind. Eh. It's it's basically like if you have a bad opinion, you should just keep your mouth shut. And I don't I don't believe in that. I think if you have a bad opinion, it's discuss it. I mean, I understand where he's coming from. Like, don't be a dick, because that's really where he's coming from. And he had issue with Chuck Wendig for. I mean, I mean, let's face it. I, I've said stuff about Chuck Wendig on here because I don't want to see his damn politics on there. Yeah. So I I stopped following the guy, and and I have to admit I love Mark Hamill. But and we follow him, of course. But I tell you, because I follow him, these stupid political things come up on my feet. I'm like, I don't want politics in my Star Wars feed, damn it. So it sucks. But I mean, Chuck Wendig calling a certain segment of the fan base. <laughs> it's true. I mean, he he wasn't wrong. And people are calling out Rebel Force Radio for saying, you know, for for blasting the guy. It's like, dude, he's not wrong. Like. These people need to be called out. It's, you know, because, because what happens is they go back in their little holes. I mean, if you, if, if it can go this viral with people being all negative, it can damn sure go back the other way. Well, that's fine. I mean, the, the one thing that we always lose sight of online is that there are people on the other end of the keyboard reading these words. Yeah. And if we were actually civil to one another and had a discussion about it, instead of just tossing flame back and forth, I completely agree. Like that's the thing is it just, it's so anonymous online that people forget that they're talking to other human beings that have feelings and, and deserve respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that really such a novel concept that we have to remember that and be told that? Well, that's, that's why I say like, I, I make sure on anything I post on social media to not type anything that I wouldn't say to someone's face. And I've been called out for it as on Facebook in particular. And I've, I've had people come up to me in person, like, what would you say? Are you going to say that to my face? And I said, yeah, I told him exactly what I said online. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I call, I, I called some dude an F and a hole. See, I, I stopped an F and a hole. Thank you for some sports stuff that it was a guy in Lima. He's like, you're going to call me an F and a hole. I said, yeah, you're an F and a hole. Like I'm, I, I'm not afraid to say this to you. I said online, I'm going to, I would, if you were here, I would say that. And I did. And I think, I think people forget that. Like if you wouldn't say it to somebody, if they're right in front of you, then don't put it online because you're just a bitch. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree entirely. And and the thing and your point is incredibly accurate and I completely agree with it. And it's it seems to me like people they don't want to discuss. They just want to holler over other people and make that make the other person come to their side. There's no 
Let's have a discussion. That's why celebration is universally regarded as a place for positivity where you can, I mean, I mean, uh, Alan and Chris that we met from England and Australia, oh, yeah. uh-huh. you know, we, we sat there having drinks with Alan. He was an older gentleman, probably like in his fifties, you know, and I'm in my early forties and there was a lot, we, we were sitting there for a couple hours at the, at the bar, at the Rosen bar, mm-hmm. just BS and star Wars. And there was a bunch of stuff we did not agree on. And it got like, we got loud a little bit, but we were just having a discussion and it wasn't, he wasn't trying to say, well, you need to think what I think. And I wasn't doing that. And people seem to forget that when you have conversations like that, you might learn things that you never considered, or you might gain knowledge you never had. It's not a bad thing to listen to what other people have to say. Or feel closer to another human being by having that discussion and that exchange of ideas. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I, I just, the way all this negativity is going, it's just, and I think to me, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because it's, it's surprising to me because I always go to Star Wars Again, escapism, because I want to escape all the negativity and bull crap and stuff that you see in the real world, you know, quote unquote real world. And now it's like invading Star Wars. And I'm just going, how is this possible? Hey, hey Steve, let me ask you, um, how do you like Forces of Destiny? I haven't watched too many of them, but I don't have a problem with it. Like I saw it right when it first launched, I probably was watched like the first like four or five that they dropped instantly, but I never like stayed caught up with it or anything like that. How do you like Rebels? Didn't like it. Okay. How do you like the books? Never read any of them. What you've heard about them though? Eh. Yeah. Like easiest way I can put it is just I don't I guess I just don't care, but I'm not upset by anybody that's a fan of them. Have you tweeted at anybody to express your displeasure with any of these things? Nope. There you go. You see how easy that yep. was? Yeah. You don't have to love everything <laughs> yeah. and you don't have to spew hate at the things you don't like. And on the flip side of the coin, someone was tweeting the other day about, you know, give me your opinion on rebels. And there was all these comments, every single one. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And I tweeted, I said, I said, gotta be honest. And I hate to be a contrarian, but I actually really didn't care for it. I wanted to, and I tried and I actually I bought every episode, so it's not like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I wasn't stealing somebody's login. I actually purchased every single episode on Google Play, and I just did not like it. I'm sorry. You know, it just wasn't for me. And people, you know, were cool about it because I was cool about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you love it, that's fine. I mean, I, I, that's great because if, if people love it, then there's more Star Wars content coming our way, right? Who doesn't want that? I mean, that's what we've got. We've got a diversity in Star Wars now where if you if you love animation and cartoons, well, there's a CG one high budget from, uh, wow, 10 years ago now. Uh, then you've got a lower budget, different time era, different style in the Disney era with yep. Rebels. Now you've got an anime inspired thing coming out next. You've got comic books of all different types and genres. You've got the live action series that's going to be coming to the Disney streaming service. You've got audio books. You've got regular books. You've got Star Wars stories that aren't part of the saga films. You've got the saga films. There's so much stuff. There's something for everybody. Yeah. So just because you don't love all of it doesn't mean you have to throw shade at the parts you don't. And the people rooting for it to fail. That's more of that hashtag 2018 crap. Like, sadly, that is what the hell it is anymore is when you don't like something, you're supposed to attack it and break it down and make it not exist anymore. Instead of having a conversation with somebody about what you do and don't like anymore. Personally, I think it's great that there's so much star Wars out there that there are parts that I don't care for. That's great. That, that proves that they're not just sticking in a formula and like turning out the same crap over and over and over again. They're, they're branching out Mm -hmm. so they can reach a broader audience. And then we can actually connect. And this is going to sound really hippie, but we can connect more as a culture, a global culture, because there's more people getting into the fandom. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. That's not hippie. I think that's a great sentiment, dude. And I think the people that are rooting for these things to fail because they didn't like one of the movies, what they seem to forget is it's okay to not like the movie, but don't root for it to fail. You should root for it to succeed, even if you don't like it, because if it succeeds, you're going to get more Star Wars, and that's another chance for you to get something that you actually do enjoy. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So you just it gives you more opportunities to find something to love. But instead, said, they just want to crap all over it and like, oh, solo tank. Thank God. Like, you know, I told you we would make it happen. I, like, I hated TLJ. So, you know, we're boycotting solo. This is we're the reason why it's not doing good in the theaters because we did it. And- <laughs> yeah. I, like rooting for and, Star Wars. And like, to fail. And like Who we were, does that? Like we were saying earlier, it's not going to affect Disney one bit because they make more things than Star Wars. Like, I don't know what Infinity War came out a few weeks, yeah. months ago and made like a gazillion dollars. Yep. And and they only have more Marvel movies coming out and they only have like three or four animated things that are going to destroy in the theaters this yeah. year and all that. Disney doesn't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they and really it, don't. Yeah. They, these people really, really think that they're making a dent. Like, no, you're really not. You're just, you just look like a jerk. And the funniest part about it is all these people like the hashtag boycott solo and everything. A lot of them, I'm not going to see solo. Cause I didn't like the last Jedi. Well, fine. I laugh at that. Cause I'm like, you probably would love solo. Yeah. And yet you're missing it because you have to be a petulant child. Yeah. You're just robbing yourself of a potentially good time. Yeah. It's- I mean, it, it's it's hilarious. People have no forethought. You know what I mean? Like they just don't think they don't think about what comes after they type that stupid tweet or I'm not going to the theater da, 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 da. I'm because screw them. And I I didn't get what I wanted. Like, well, you, you're not you're not going to get what you want all the time. Do you think it's just an online phenomenon? Because, yeah, because I really do. When I think about the parts of the fandom that aren't a bunch of jerks and and always make me happy, I think 501st. I think celebration. All yeah. the things that involve people seeing people and working offline, those are the parts that I think are fabulous. I've never I've never seen any crap get tossed back and forth in a 501st forum. All those build threads and stuff, no matter how bad you screw up what you've done and how much somebody else. You're not else- afraid to go there. Like you said, the shark infested waters earlier. Right. You're not afraid to go ask them something no, without you, getting you go, yeah, you ask, over You it. ask the most mundane question that should be the most obvious thing in the world. And they're just like, hey, it's cool, man. We all been there. This is what you do about it. Here's some mm-hmm. resources to help out. And, you know, like I, there was a there was a Facebook thread I was following the other day because um the Ohio Garrison has uh, what they, what do they call it? Uh, an Academy uh, Facebook group. And it's strictly for um, mentoring. So when people are trying to get into the 501st in Ohio and you know, they, they pair up newbies who are building with veterans who are in there. So you have like a one-on-one like pairing. And then they have these things called armor parties where someone says, Hey, this is my address from these hours to these hours on this day, usually on a weekend, of course. Yeah. My garage is open. I got a workbench. Let's all get together and let's help each other build our kits. And it's it's literally strangers who met online through a common interest coming together in person and having a great time and building friendships and experiences. And I don't see these things happening online. I see that, that they can create that experience in the real world, but it doesn't happen strictly digitally. And I wonder what the problem is there. It's it's so it, easy it's, because it's they can hide. Warriors. Yeah. They hide behind it's the keyboard. Like, it's like the first thing JT said in this conversation is when I said, yeah, those toxic idiots will be at celebration, but they're going to be hiding in plain sight because they're not going to have the balls to do. The yeah, things. they won't they, say anything. They will wait till they're at the hotel that night to get back on their Twitter accounts oh. and say the things that they saw at celebration that day and then go back the next day and go. Huh, I wonder you'll be there going, well, I wonder what asshole said this and this, it, you know, on their Twitter account last night. And that guy might be right behind you just going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because in person, they have to actually have communication skills and they actually have to worry that somebody that they're going to, you know, rip on. Might that somebody might that they might their offend might, their throat, right? might see them at the hotel bar at eleven o'clock yeah, that night? Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you think would happen to that guy that when said somebody bad mouths Ray Park and he like does some like <laughs> spinning back kick off of the bar exactly. at the hotel that night? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, that that guy that guy that said if I was in a room with Stalin and Hitler and Kathleen Kennedy and a gun with two bullets, I'd shoot Kathleen Kennedy <laughs> twice. Like, what do you think he's going to say if he's in front of Kathleen Kennedy? He's either going to say nothing. I love nothing, your movies, man. Yeah, I, I, I love Star Wars. Or he's going to say nothing because he knows damn well if he says that. First of all, security is going to take him away. He'd probably have police involvement. Right. It's considered a death threat. Yeah. And there might be those really riled up fans that are going to try and beat the ever living crap out of him. 
You know, I wonder how many times at a hotel bar in the after hours parties of a Star Wars celebration, some some bigger dude has tapped somebody on the shoulder from earlier in the day and go, he doesn't like you. <laughs> right? I don't like you either. <laughs> dude, did you think about it? The only time we've ever seen a fist fight almost go down at celebration <laughs> was <me>. you. <laughs> yeah. But and that and it wasn't even me being a jerk. It was this other dude. Being a total prick to um, Doug uh, Wegner, it, it, like I think that's his, yeah, Wegner, like the guy that played Quinlan Voss, yeah, because he was just poking the guy, and I'm like, dude, like you don't have to like do that. I, I called him out. Actually, then, that's a great example of this. That was totally online behavior in the real world. Yeah, and look what happened. I almost got in a fist fight. I did have a great one liner. I'm still proud of that one. On the but, plus you know. side, you got to give the guy a slight amount of credit for at least being a personal piece of crap instead of hiding behind yeah, yeah. a yeah. keyboard to do it yeah. is that better or worse to be that much of a jerk in person too i'm not sure at least it's real i gotta yeah, give the guy bonus points for being genuine. real that, that's probably a guy that doesn't have a twitter account and realizes he can do that at home instead yeah of at, least he's got, at least he's got balls like yeah. i give the guy yeah. credit you know I give anybody credit if they're if, if you're gonna have a problem with somebody, that's the guy you're gonna tell punch them. and then buy him a beer afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you've like, you've earned this kid. Here ex- you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I just you've I, earned this. Bam. Yeah, <laughs> and you've earned this. One more, please. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Here's a shot. Two of them. Pow. <laughs> it's Vieger. But uh, yeah, I mean, pow right in the kiss. Exactly. Pow right in the kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's easy, AJ. I mean these people will not say stuff to somebody's face, and you know. They do love Star Wars because so many of these people are going to go to celebration and we'll probably talk to them. Mm-hmm. We will probably have discussions with people who have tweeted this awful I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm saying it right now, since, you know, this is going to be on the Internet. Anyone that, that thinks we're talking about you right now, by all means, we'll give you our Skype and you're welcome to come on the show. We would love to hear your thoughts and, and you know, why you take the stance you do online. Yeah, I mean, it's open forum. I don't mind talking to people like that. I mean, it'd be, <laughs> there might be more edits, but well, well actually, you know, here's, here's an example. Here's an example. Pond story games. You know, he responded. It, it took him a while to catch the episode where we mentioned him. It was May 21st of last year, mm-hmm. but, but he said, you know, we, we torched him because he was ripping on force awakens and he what was an hour and 15 minute video or something. He did. Yeah. His criticisms got ridiculous, but you know, we, we are, like I said, same thing. Open call. If he wants to come on the show because he did reply and he said, hey, I'm I'm happy to come on your show anytime. If you guys want to talk about this, I think we should take him up on it. I'm fine with that. I, I that, feel that's putting our that's putting our money where our mouth is. I feel like we owe him an apology for being a little childish about certain things. But when I listened back to that and I listened to his video, I went, no, some of this stuff is really dumb and it's obviously trolling. And so I, I would be interested to I mean, I, and I've never done that before. I actually talked to an actual troll be like, why? why did you do that? Like, it's obvious clickbait. Like, why do you create content like that? I don't understand the mentality behind it. It might've been like, hello. People love getting their names clicked on the internet. <laughs> yeah. That's, it, it, that's, that's going to be the show that we have to re-record because it just turns into a battle. Right? And then we have to, <laughs> but, but it might, it might literally be like, like hello Greedo says where, you know, it's, it's YouTube and the more clicks is, is monetization. So he, who knows? He might not even feel that strongly about it, but that's the way you got to phrase things to get the clicks to get paid. I, I don't know. Yeah, remember, just, I, I made that joke a few shows ago and I was like, you know, what? we should just clickbait our title for our show and just put something about Fortnite and V-Bucks and blah, 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 like because that's the biggest thing on YouTube right now. And it would just end up on a trending page and go to our stupid podcast when it has nothing to do with what the title said. But clicks are clicks. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, we, we could actually have a clickbait title for this episode, but it would be legit. <laughs> Why are. Why are so many Star Why are so many online Star Wars fans such a holes? Just make sure the <laughs> I mean, thumbnail seriously. has like a bunch of colorful arrows and stuff yeah. pointing on it. Something to draw the <laughs> eye, to draw to the clickbait. Right. Top ten reasons why Star Wars fans are in an online flame war? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> flame war? Yeah, I, I, mean, I just I'm just surprised. Click that, that it, subscribe button. Click the little bell. Get your notifications. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm so pander, surprised. Pander, 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 pander. <laughs> I just I just can't believe I, I just can't believe how, how pervasive it is. It's it's just gotten so much. And and the, the funniest thing is that, you know, the, the I mean, Kelly Marie Tran is is the 
face of it really right now at least from what's going online new face of it i think hayden yeah. christensen uh might yeah. have a thing or two I, to I, say I, about I just her mean, current predicament I, I just yeah yeah i just mean what's currently topical like you and said you know bring it back to back then you know you imagine what hayden christensen and 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 crap i'm drawing a blank because i'm trying to make this up on the fly the dude that played little annie in episode oh, one jake, uh, jake lloyd. lloyd imagine the crap they would have went through if twitter was just was this prevalent back when the prequels oh, good, came out good god lucasfilm would have to pay for like bodyguards because they'd be on suicide watch and jake lloyd would have been in 13 reasons why on netflix instead of the actress that right was, <laughs> like it would have been horrible for that little dude <laughs> when that movie came out <laughs> All right, right? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because like of, of all characters to get skewered and, and be kind of like the focal point of this, it's Rose when she she's her, the her, voice of endless hope. Yeah. Her line in the movie is exactly what we're trying, what all the fans that are trying to be good and like, you know, keep this in a positive, keep Star Wars in a positive light. It's her quote is, uh, you know, that's how we're going to win. Not, you know, not destroying not, what we hate. we hate, but, but saving what we love. Yeah. And that's that's perfect i mean it's that's so the ironic. political tones man that's uh, what you're not watching in the movies <laughs> i i just it's like i don't understand it like i i know that stuff's there i get it but do you i i really think people go into these movies start like trying to look for this stuff like they just they can't i mean i screenshotted something that you know it was because i don't think they're trying to i i think that they part- have to be Part of being inundated with these messages all the time is that you can't shut your brain off from that mode when you're supposed to be enjoying something that's complete fantasy. I mean, yes, let's face it. There are some, you know, some messages in there. I'm sure there were. I mean, the original Star Wars was not immune either. That was that was hippie George, you know, expressing his beliefs. You have the impressive empire and then you've got the free thinking rebels. And yeah, so there, I mean, there were messages all along, but you know, it was the veneer was thick enough that we could just forget about that and, you know, passively ingest those messages instead of having them right on the surface and then, you know, shouting about them online afterward. I just I don't know. I, I, I just think people go into these movies. Some people go in there looking for it. I mean, there was I mean, the, the, all like one of the other things that I've seen a lot of is like the kind of ripping on solo because the female characters were, you know, they were all these terms like somebody said they were fridged or something. What does that even mean? I don't, I have no idea. So I hope they spelled it right because if it's F R G G E D, then that's a, that's a slur for another thing. I know. <laughs> like, no, a couple of people, I, I asked about that online and a couple of people tried to explain it. And I was like, you know, there's a couple of different things, but I mean, there's this like move. I mean, you know, my wife even got involved because these women were trying to blast us for our uh, cover picture on Twitter because it's Steph's chest, my wife's chest with our lo- with our T-shirt on, so it says Nerf Herder Council, and then me and AJ going, oh, like you know, making a funny face, and it was her idea. She thought it would be funny, so we we took the picture, we put it up there, and these and women it was were- just a it was just a chance crop too. It was actually yeah. all three of us in the picture, mm-hmm. and the way it just gets you know letterboxed out for the banner image on YouTube just yeah. happens to be that. You it, know? Lo- it looks like it was posed and it wasn't. Yeah. And that was, that was the uh, second victory of the aluminum Falcons actually. Exactly. And like I was getting killed because I didn't understand a, a tweet that someone had sent out about, you know, the women characters. I said, are you guys overreacting to something or did I miss like another? Yeah. Tweet? That was, that was part of the rabbit hole. I went down when I checked our account when they were like, yeah. well, are you a woman? Because if you're not, you don't belong in this conversation and take your blah, blah, blah. And I was, yeah, that was, it was pretty like much where I tapped out. Crap. And I was like, I, I, all I asked was, did I miss something? And, and and most everybody was like, oh yeah, you did. He, he, this guy had actually said this, this, I'm like, oh, okay. I did miss something. Thanks for clarifying. And then this other one was just killing me for it. And I, I saw her with another tweet and, and she just, you know, I mean, I swear these people just look for this stuff. I mean, she, you know, this woman is trying to crucify me. And then, you know, I said, that's my wife's idea. You know, she she thought it was funny. And then she goes, well, I don't I don't believe it. I'll, I'll believe it when your wife says something. So my wife went in there and said, yeah, that's my idea. I thought it was funny. It's my picture. Crickets. They didn't say nothing. I'm like, see, come well, on. Like, what are you doing? So, so. Well, y- they backed want- down once they got what they asked for. Well, it's it's crap. It's like you can't call someone a sexist. Basically, it was the, it was the underlying inference to me calling me a sexist. And then as soon as it's proven not, then uh, uh, you go. You, how about an apology? How about go? Oh, OK. So you, it's okay for you to like, like tell me that I'm, I'm saying something about women, which I didn't. It's okay for you to attack me for being a man in a woman's conversation. But then as soon as come to find out you're wrong, 
you can't come out and admit that you're wrong. It's like, so yeah, I mean, that's crap. And you know, one of them says some person, nothing about the last Jedi was sexual. Everyone with an English degree ever looks into the camera, like the office. It's like, what? Like, uh, so it's like, you uh, why are you going to a star Wars movie? It's like, you have to like, look for this stuff. Like, I don't, well, I mean, I don't understand. I mean, is it there? Yeah. And then other people, you know, posted pictures of two pictures, one of, of uh, Ray falling down into the hole, like the dark side hole in the last Jedi. And then like, like swimming. I will confess to have made some jokes with my girlfriend about that. Yeah. And then one of Ray walking up the hill towards the jet, the tree and you know, the, the forest tree. And someone uh, said, I don't get that one. Someone's well, they said these pictures are side by side. How many phallic and yonic symbols do you need? Oh, so okay. basically, so basically now it's that's, like that's a, was, an analogy for a vagina and an analogy for penises. That's what I was guessing, but yeah. it's such I, a, I'm it's like, such a reach in my mind. I did. Okay, I so, yeah, so like, all, what are you doing? all holes in movies are references to vaginas and all trees are penises. That's what, I, that's, like, what, that's, what like, we're, that's what like, it is now. Yes. I, like okay. if, if you're, if you're if just you're making sure that, I got it figured out. Oh yeah. yeah. Lord of the Rings. My God, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're seeing that in these movies, are you even enjoying yourself? I, I don't understand. And, you know, if you do see it, more power to you. We all have our own experiences. Like I said, I watch it for fun. If you watch all these movies for stuff like that, fine. But, you know, to attack people for not seeing it or to try and look for that, it just seems like do you have a, I, I, I was thinking I know this is wrong, but I think do you have any joy in your life? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just going to go there, actually. Like, <laughs> I see that stuff and I think to myself. I hope these people are are well adjusted in real life and they just use the internet as like an escape valve, just like vent their frustration so they can go about the rest of their day in happiness. Maybe that's what it is. Cause that's, I Maybe. mean, that's I, a good theory. They man. just let all the poison out on their Twitter account and then they're just happy go lucky the rest of their days. I don't know. Yeah. Probably as we said, because if they said that stuff in person, they get their ass kicked. Yeah. Like I, I read that stuff and, and I don't really get mad at them. I, I kind of feel sorry for him. I'm like, if that's, if that's your attitude as you go through life, man, that's, that's a harsh way to be. <laughs> we need to doctor up that, that quote from uh, office space where he's like, do you ever have anybody ask you if you have a case of the Mondays? Like, no, hell no. <laughs> hell no, man. I do believe you get your ass kicked for saying something like that. <laughs> we, just need, yeah. we, we just need to have a somebody at the beginning. that says, do you ever, do you ever say the stuff you write on Twitter to the person's face? You're tweeting it at no, hell no. Hell no, man. Do believe you get your ass kicked for saying something like that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> like, it'd be so fitting. But yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to tear those people down, but it was, it's just kind of like, you know, I mean, we all watch it for our own purposes. And I just, I guess I kind of feel bad for them. And it's not my place to do that, but I'm just like, I mean, these are fun movies. And they don't want your pity. Yeah, they don't want your pity. It's, it's not my place. And I know I'm, it's probably, I'm probably kind of a jerk for that, but I just, I'm like, man, I, I, I'm watching, you know, people use the force and the Millennium Falcon whooping ass and, you know, Chewbacca, hat, you know, with a porg and these people are seeing all this other stuff. And I'm just like, it always makes me wonder, like, I, do you do this with every movie or, or you know, I, I, it's just that outlook confuses me. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, don't be part of the problem. It doesn't matter if, if I'm mad about people getting on me for saying I want to watch it for fun. I can't be mad at people for watching it for that or seeing those things because mm -hmm. then I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. It's I, like I said, I just can't believe it. It's gotten into Star Wars like this and especially stuff with like Rebel Force Radio going at, you know, Chuck Wendig and then, you know, Jason Ward just putting the biggest Star Wars podcast there is on blast. It's just like, wow, that's stuff I'd never thought I would see. I think you hit on the key point there. I I just hope that what we perceive as as problems and hate and everything. I hope that whatever whatever's going on with all this stuff, the people involved are. It's going to sound weird, but enjoying it. Like if they're getting what they want out of the discussion, maybe they're angry and they they're like Ren. I I love being angry. But, yeah, right. You know, but it, as long as as long as everyone's getting what they want out of it and enjoying Star Wars in their own way then great. That's really what it all comes down to is we all enjoy it and we get something out of it. So as long as you're still getting that more power to you, man, mm -hmm. I, ju I just wish people wouldn't be offensive and, you know, ridiculous about it. When, when you're driving actors and actresses off of a social media platform, because you're saying such hateful, angry things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I say, Ryan Johnson finally lashed out at somebody today and I was glad to see it. I'm like, good. 
when it all comes down to it, whenever you go on any social media, it is like the most god awful, ugliest place <laughs> on the history of the planet, dude. Like, is even I love all my Disney stuff. It's just as bad. Like the Disney fan base on Twitter is just just as bad as this stuff we're talking about with Star Wars. Like how you can take the happiest place on Earth and just break people down for not liking the same attractions you do or the same uh, uh, or or if they refurbish. If you don't like the teacups and f- you. Yeah. <laughs> like if they don't if, if they refurbish something nice. and then you get all these people that are all anti refurb because well why do you leave why did you mess with what Walt did and blah 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 and then you just get these divides and it just it keeps going and going and it's the same thing where it's just like just people are just like there's a thing going on in Disney Twitter right now where one of the biggest uh pages that I don't even want to acknowledge them because I think they are ass hats but <laughs> nice but like it's it's a goal of people in Disney Twitter to get blocked by this guy's Twitter account now. Like people are wearing it as a badge of honor that you said something so ridiculous that you got this guy's Twitter account to block you. You know, it's just like and I can't scroll through my Twitter feed without somebody mentioning like, oh, look, look at this. I got blocked by so and so today. And and then right underneath that is some toxic Star Wars tweet. And then right underneath that is a toxic Disney tweet. And then I'm just like, you know what? And then under that is a, a toxic NBA tweet because of the NBA finals going on. And it's just like, you know, it's like, yeah. dude, I'm like, I can't even scroll through Twitter for more than like two minutes anymore without just leaving and doing something else with my life. I, and I, I don't know if that's even a bad thing. Maybe it's right just now. time to get rid of the social media no. crap. I don't know. It's, I barely go on my personal page because I only signed up for it. And I, I just, I just want to look at like, get like up to the second sports news for, you know, Cleveland teams and whatnot. And oh, it's, I, I, I really I can't. I can't. Yeah. It's like, I, I shouldn't even, I literally should not have social media. If you go and look at, like the last time I've put something up, be it on my Facebook or my Twitter, it's like, you got to go so far down into the rabbit hole to find it. And it's just like, why do I even have this crap? If I don't even use it to say, I literally just like look at other people's crap and then go on about my life. This is like, I don't tweet anything. I don't put anything on Facebook. What the hell do I have them for? Right. Other than to scroll through it while I'm on the dumper in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) That's literally what they're there for. I just know it's bad for me because every time I click on on something to see what the comments are, I I immediately before I even read one comment, I start going, "Oh, why'd you do that? You know what's coming." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I, just, I, I must be a glutton for punishment. Yeah, it's like you see an ignorant tweet and then you're like, "There's 29 replies to this." Click, and you yeah. just you brought yourself to the it's, and then, and then, <laughs> then it's like and then it's like a car stuff. crash and you can't look away. Yeah, and then I'm getting pissed off, and then my very next thought is. You did this to yourself, you moron. Yep. You knew what you were getting into. I mean, it's like Star Wars Newsnet. I just, you know, I click on the comments underneath these articles. I'm like, oh, why did I do that? And then sure enough, there's these people that are just, you know, and then you start ridiculous. Be- then you start becoming a troll. Like I, I was scrolling through the Twitter feed before we got here because I, I know you've been JT, you've been a lot more active on our show page. So I decided to catch up and see what, you know, we air quotes have been saying <laughs> right <laughs> and like i caught uh hello greedo just had a tweet you know your favorite star wars scene in gif go and i i my first thought was what's the dumbest thing i can put on here <laughs> i was like looking for like han solo connect or something you know like <laughs> it's like oh don't do that man don't do that you're gonna open yourself up <laughs> yeah yep. right one goofy picture a lumpy turns into you know you getting blasted on twitter for the next four days right <laughs> yep Right. It's like, it's, it's, it's fun to needle those people. It's so much fun. It's, but it's also as a result, so hard not to do. I just, I don't want to be part of it. And I know that I don't have the time to respond to everybody that I want. And 160 characters or whatever it is, is not enough for me. And I just get so angry and I'm like, I'm, I'm part of the problem. I, I can't do that. So I just, like I said earlier, you know, and to put a capper on it, it's like, I want to keep our page I don't want to get dragged down into that if if there's any way I can help it because I don't you know, I, I, just, I just don't want to be that guy. You know, I, I want to be the representation of like, you know, a show and a bunch of guys that, you know, if we say it on the air, we'll say it to you, mm-hmm. as I've said many times this show. And if you meet us at celebration, you'll get the same thing out of us in person 
the same type of discussion, the same type of attitude. You'll get it in person as you would on, you know, if you if you subscribe and listen you just to our might podcast. Be, you just might be drunk when you say it. That's Except, all. I, I was <laughs> going to say, yeah. maybe, maybe not the offers to buy drinks, though, because we don't have that kind of money. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, I, so We should yeah, start a know. Patreon and just use the proceeds to buy drinks for people at Celebration. <laughs> right. <laughs> Speak, speaking of Patreon, we don't we don't have one of our own. But if anybody wants to help out a friend of ours, uh, Tim is doing a Patreon for his show and uh, he's putting some of the proceeds towards not only his, uh, his show, but he's, he's actually putting some of it towards getting to celebration. It's his first one. He's never been. And he's uh, trying, he's promoting that for himself. And I fully support that because he is insanely positive. Mm -hmm. He's got a great show. It's uh, less than 12 parsecs. It's the fastest star Wars podcast in the galaxy. And I was recently, I was actually on there uh, say, last except week. Except for the times he talks to any of us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I have, I think I now hold the record as the longest, less than 12 parsecs, but um, <laughs> he asked me if, if I would go long and I said, yes. Yeah. So that he did ask me yeah. about that. So it wasn't like I just was talking his ear off, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really, really fun show. So check it out. Each episode is like five or six minutes. So it's really quick. So check him out. Donate to his Patreon, help him get the celebration. If there's anybody who deserves some financial assistance and getting there, he's the guy. Yes, he is. Like we said, he's very, very positive. His page is great. His show is great. So check him out. We'll, uh, we'll plug put for our buddy Tim there. Yeah, we'll put some links up. Not that anybody's hearing that right now, but we'll put some links up on our social media <laughs> right. that we don't want to use because... <laughs> we, we should we should have plugged Tim at the very beginning of the show and not at the end. <laughs> but at least, you know, well, at least we're trying to help out our friends. So... Yeah, to close well, that. That's why we put it on the social media, because it's like, hey, we know you're not going to listen this far into the podcast where we promoted this. So we'll just put it on here now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, to put a cap around it all, uh, we're going to keep our stuff positive as much as we possibly can. And we are going to be uh, at celebration. Uh, well, two of us anyway. Yeah. One of us isn't dedicated. I am not. But maybe we should start a Patreon to get Steve's way paid there. What do you See? Think? No, nah, I'm, mad. I'm, I'm mad at him now. No, nah, I'm all about that. If somebody else wants to pay my way to celebration, I'm there with you No, guys. you because you have the money to go. You're just going to dumb Disney for like an 18th hey, time. you watch your friggin' mouth about my Disney. You cut it. the cord. You've been there a million times. You haven't been to celebration once. You are on a Star Wars podcast. You need to go. And it's in driving distance. You can't go for one day. Maybe. Get the Patreon going. I'll get going. Hit the, hit the damn road at like four in the morning. Get there. Go for a day and then drive home. That's all you have to do. Pay for parking and a one day ticket. And you're there. You're not even doing that. We no, got not- we got 11 months to work on. Him. Yeah. Right. It's still not going to work. You know how stubborn he is. Yeah. This is nothing new. So <laughs> anyways, uh, one thing that it we're going to be working on. how that Patreon goes. <laughs> I might be there for a day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so one thing that we're going to be doing coming up, we're going to try and work on uh, seeing if we can do these live and then we're going to open up our Skype. So if people want to call in while we're talking and be a part of the show, uh, I actually tweeted about that. And a few people said, yeah, I, I would do that. I would listen. So that's cool. And, you know, I think it'd be awesome to have people's opinions uh, besides our own to kind of direct the conversation sometimes. So um, depending how much of an ass you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, my, my, <laughs> the computer's in front of me and I will hang up on you in, a, in like half of a second. I don't care. So. Right. If you're a D bag, well, if, if, you were if it up. follows any of the recent Windows updates, you won't have to hang up. Microsoft will do it for you. Yeah. That's, right. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're even more topical. <laughs> so uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. Uh, don't forget, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for a 30 day trial and a free audiobook download. AJ is raising his hand. Yes, my personal recommendation this month is Ready Player One. I know it came out a little while ago, Ooh. but I just got around to it. And uh, tons of 80s pop culture references and a really fun story. So, And uh, it's narrated by Quill Wheaton. Oh, no kidding. Which is interesting because he's a character in the book as well. Oh, that's awesome. I know I know. when that one comes out on Blu-ray, I haven't seen it. And I'm buying it in 3D because all my friends that saw it said it was amazing. So just for the graphics alone, I'm going to buy it in 3D for home viewing purposes. So. Yep. So go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC and grab that Ready Player One copy and have some fun with it. Yep. You can do it for free. Uh, thanks to Galactic Empire for allowing us to use their music as our intro. 
They have a new album out called Episode 2. You can go find that. It's on Rise Records. You can get it on Amazon and iTunes and all those good places. You can find the Nerf Herder Council at Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, CastBox, most Android pocket uh, podcast apps. Excuse me. You can find all of our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Nerf Herder Council. Our website, nerfherdercouncil.com. We do have our Twitter page, which, as we said, we are very active on lately. It is at NHC Podcast. You can look us up on Facebook, Nerf Herder Council. If you would like to call and leave us a voicemail and have it played on the air, if you have an opinion, it is 440-987-WARS. If you'd like to send us an email, feedback at nerfherdercouncil.com. So thanks again. We appreciate it. Stay positive out there, everybody. Just remember that the online community, people that are being jerks, they're just a loud, obnoxious, vocal minority. So everybody else out there in person and in Star Wars land is a beautiful human being. So I am your host, JT, at Dog Pound Jedi. He is AJ. At Drake Adams, 579. He's Steve. At JSteve1005. And we'll catch you next time. Bolts is never gonna get us past that blockade. This bucket's got a few surprises left in her. Plus, me and Chewie are on it. Ain't that right, Chewie? Hell yeah, you might nerf herder. You might nerf herder. <laughs>